everyone and welcome back to the two-part Columbia campus tour. My name is Caroline, I'm a junior at Columbia University and I'm so excited to be leading you on the second part of our virtual tour for today. Before watching this video, make sure you check out part one of this series, which I will link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Now that we have the first year area covered, let's talk a little bit more about the academic buildings and what's in each one of them. I'm going to rotate around just so we're looking north. So this is the other side of Butler. This is Carmen, as we can see, this is Jean Jay. And so if we walk here, we'll see that next to Fernald, there is Pulitzer Hall. Pulitzer Hall, I've been in a couple of times. It is the journalism building on campus. And it's also where the Pulitzer Prize is awarded each year. Undergrads, I don't think go in there too much, but Hamilton Hall over here, it houses like a lot of the core curriculum offices. This is where I had my Lit Hum class my first year. I feel like there's like one elevator. It's on the left side of the building. And so there's only one elevator. So sometimes taking the stairs is a little bit faster. So here's just a PDF version of the map from Columbia. You can just go on Columbia's website and download this. But this is essentially what we talked about. And so let's talk about Kent Hall. So Kent Hall is home to the East Asian Library. So right when you walk in, the first thing that you see is the entrance to the library. Other than that, if you go down to the basement, that's where you can get your stickers for your IDs. So on your Columbia University ID, you can put these like semesterly stickers to prove that you are a current student at Columbia. And if you go to certain museums and you show them your ID and you have a sticker that, for example, says spring 2021, that's proof that I'm a current student at Columbia. And so there might be a discount or might be free access to those museums. So always make sure to update your stickers in Kent Hall. And if we look to the left, this is going to be Dodge. There's two Dodges at Columbia. One is Dodge the Music Hall and one is Dodge the Gym, which is over here. So Dodge Music Hall, I've been in maybe once or twice. I know that there is a Joe Coffee in there and there's also a theater somewhere down here. You can enter through, I think through Broadway. There's like an entrance here. That's pretty much all I know about it. Undergrads don't typically go in here unless you play an instrument. I think there are also music practice rooms in here, which you have to reserve. But yeah, over here, this is probably the icon that you always see in any Columbia brochure. This is called Low Memorial Library or just Low Library. Even though it has library in its name, it's not technically a library. Right now it is filled with, I think, administrative things. If you go inside, you can see the rotunda, the low rotunda. This is where the surf symposium was held. And that is essentially the summer undergraduate research fellowship symposia, just meaning like a poster presentation session of all the research that the undergrads have done. So during my first year, I was actually a staffer on the student affairs committee of the Columbia University Senate. And on Fridays, we would have meetings in one of the rooms back here. Another icon of Columbia is Alma Mater a symbol of wisdom, a symbol of scholarly knowledge. And under her cloak, there's an owl. The legend is that if you're the first one of your year to find the owl, you will be valedictorian, but no one knows for sure if that's the truth. So this is Philosophy Hall. On the first floor, there is the Writing Center, which is super, super helpful. If you go to Columbia and you have a writing assignment, whether that be for one of the core classes, if you're writing a book, if you're working on some poetry, you can go to the Writing Center and they have graduate students there. They have professors there who will help you for free. In here, there is also a graduate student lounge. I think it has sushi. It has a lot of good food. It's a cool, clean atmosphere. So that was Philosophy Hall. So over here is Lewiston Hall. It is where the School of General Studies has its main lounges, I believe. So Columbia has four undergraduate schools, Columbia College, which is what I'm in, Columbia School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, Columbia School of General Studies, and there's Barnard College, which is across the street. So now that we talked about philosophy and Lewiston, there's a lot of other buildings to the north of campus. And I wanna get to the ones that are most applicable for undergrads. So let's talk about the math building. Over here is the math building where a lot of the math classes happen. If you want a nice study nook that not a lot of people know about, there is a math library in this building. It's really nice because you can borrow your math textbooks from there. There's computers, there's tables for people to work. But if you keep walking in, you're gonna see a slim staircase. 
it's gonna seem like you don't wanna go up there or you don't know if you're allowed to go up there. But if you do go up there, it's another level. And so I would often do my math homework in the upper level of the math library. So that was the math building. And let's talk about Havemeyer. Havemeyer is home to the chemistry department. My first year I took general chemistry and I also had chemistry lab in this building. And so Havemeyer Hall is well known for having the lecture hall where Spider-Man was filmed. And I just remember looking up which seat Spider-Man sat in so I could sit in that one or at least find it, but I don't remember if I found it. If you guys find it, comment down below and let me know which seat it is. If we pass the Havemeyer complex, we'll see this beautiful glass building called the Northwest Corner Building. And let me see if I could rotate for a better view. So yeah, this is NOCO. The upper levels are where a lot of the labs are. There is the Northwest Corner Library. And the first floor is a collaborative floor. So you can talk, you can work on group projects on the first floor. And then the second floor is a, a quiet study space. There are also these small cubicles where you can work. And so depending on your study style, you can find a space in NOCO. And if you walk into NOCO, instead of going left to NOCO library, you can go right and you're gonna see escalators that go downstairs. And that is gonna bring you to another Joe Coffee, which is a coffee place. You can get food there, you can get coffee there as the name suggests. So that's another nice area to go to. So let's rotate and go to the Department of Physics. So here we have Pupin, which is our physics building. I had my physics lectures in here and there's a lot of like interesting things that have happened in this building. I'll leave you guys to read the wiki page on this. And here's Shapiro. To be honest, I don't think many undergrads actually go inside during their four years. There's actually a dorm or residence hall called Shapiro too. So just don't get those two confused. This is where the Shapiro Engineering Center is. And this is Shapiro Hall. So it's not that far away, but it's just like a few blocks down. When we pass by Shapiro, we reach this area where there's kind of this round thing over here. But what is hidden that you can't really see over here is the entrance into MUD. This is the engineering building. A lot of the undergraduate engineers and also graduate engineers have classes in here. There's lots of engineering labs in here. And also there is the Columbia Makerspace in here, which is a super cool area where you get to work on your own projects, whether it be school related or just personal pet projects. There's 3D printers, there's sewing machines, embroidery machines, t-shirt printing machines, and actual like hardcore woodworking machines too. So that is mud. Over here next to it is Fairchild. This is where a lot of the natural sciences biology labs are. I also think it's connected via mud, but I haven't been in here more than a few times. So as we walk past Fairchild, here is Schirmerhorn. I call it Schirmerhorn, people call it Skirmerhorn. And technically, Schirmerhorn is home to the Department of Art History and Archaeology, but I just know it as the building where I took FROSI. So Frontiers of Science is a first year class that all Columbia College students have to take. So I was on the seventh floor where I had FROSI. So here is the Columbia Business School. This whole hall is called Juris Hall. And the first time I went into the library there, I thought I was in the wrong place. People were talking. People were having conversations, group projects going on. And then in the very back, there are these like glass separated little study rooms that you can reserve if you're a business student. And last but not least, let's talk about Dodge Physical Fitness Center. So we talked about Dodge Music Hall, which was like back there. Dodge Gym is underground. So there, these are stairs. You walk down the stairs. There's a like the entrance is here, you go inside, you swipe in, and then you go to your right. So technically, when you walk in, you're on the upper level, and then there's a middle level, and then there's a lower level. On the upper level, on the right, there is like a set of mirrors, and there's blue mats where you can do your stretching and some exercises on. This fence thing actually separates a track that goes all around the gym. So you can do indoor running here. And then the lower floor has the blue gym, so it's not the official basketball court. The official basketball court is over here. It's a little bit different. You kind of have to maneuver your way in there, but this is what the actual basketball court looks like. 
And yeah, also here's a picture of the pool. The pool is really nice because during normal times, you get to have free swim from 7 to 9 p.m. or from 1 to 5 or something like that, depending on if it's a weekday or a weekend. There are different lanes designated for slower, medium, or fast swimmers, so you can choose that. Otherwise, I think the other hours, the pool is reserved for student athlete practice, or you'll sometimes see like little children here learning how to swim. That's pretty cute. All right, so that concludes part two of our two-part series of a campus tour of Columbia University. I really do hope that some of the video clips that I've inserted and personal commentary that I've made on the campus helped you to understand Columbia a little bit better from the student's perspective. If you haven't checked these playlists out yet, I'll link them in the description below, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, bye.